Hello all and welcome to On The Spot STEM. Today we will be tackling the 2019 AMC 12A number 22. And the problem is a geometry problem, so let's uh, draw up a diagram and solve it from there. So we have circles omega and gamma, both centered at O, so they're concentric circles. They have radii 20 and 17 respectively. So let's quickly draw that up. So I'm going to exaggerate the difference between the radii just um, just because it's easier for us to see things later. So we have omega and gamma right there. And equilateral triangle ABC whose interior lies in the interior of omega, but in the exterior of gamma. So since the interior of the triangle lies kind of, we know that it has to lie in this analyst region, the region in between the two, cir the two circles. The triangle is going to look something roughly like that. So, and since, so, that, we have that, and we know A lies on omega. So we can label point A right there. And we know that the line containing side BC is tangent to a gamma. So I drew that here, kind of. So B and C right there. And segments AO and BC intersect at P. So I'm going to draw a clearer diagram to the right, but for now, let's just... So it's important to understand, although my diagram might not show it, that AO and BC do not intersect at their tangent point, and at the tangent point of BC and gamma, and we'll see why later. So we have, we label this point P, then we have BP over CP equals 3, and we want to find the side length of the triangle. So I'm going to draw much more... A careful diagram over here. I just I gave you guys the general layout on the left, but here's a more careful diagram. So I'm actually gonna draw the triangle first. And so we know that if we put, for example, let's put point B here, point C here, and point A up here. We know BP over CP is three, right? So um, we're BP point P is gonna be about here, point P. And we know that, well, we know that AP, if we extend it, we're going to hit O, right? So we extend AP for a little bit until we hit, let's say, let's stop it here, and this will call point O. And the nice thing is, we know that AO is 20, because it's the radius of the big circle. And the other nice thing we have is that since O is the center of gamma, O is the center of gamma, and we know that BC is tangent to gamma, we can drop this kind of little perpendicular here, and we can have a 90 degree angle, and that, this circle right here, tangent at that, you know, that, that altitude right there, that, this circle is gamma. And the nice thing there is, if we call that point X, that point right there, that tangent point, we have that OX, is 17, which is really nice. So I'm going to label that on the diagram real quick. And so I'm going to erase this over here since we've kind of encoded the information. And so now we actually have, actually have to solve the problem. So we have information about AO. We have information about you know, we have information about OX, and we know that ABC is an equilateral triangle. So we have to use that somehow. So when I see this right triangle, OPX, I, I want to find some lengths that way, right? So what you can try to do is set up some similar triangles in this fashion. So if I drop the altitude from A to B, C, then some, some nice things happen. So I'm gonna redraw, so let's call this point H. So if I redraw this, so this is gonna be point A, this is gonna be point H, this is point P, this is point X, and this is point O. So, you guys see how I got this. Basically, I dropped the altitude 
uh, from A to B, C at point H. And then so I kind of set up these two similar right triangles, kind of. And we know that um, they're similar because AH is parallel to OX because angle AHP equals angle OXP. So these two triangles are similar. And the nice thing about these two triangles is that we know a lot about their lengths. So let's denote the side length of the equilateral triangles S. So then clearly we know that AH, the altitude of the equilateral triangle, is going to be S square root 3 over 2, which is kind of nice. And the other nice thing we have is we know PH, because if I draw like this, so I draw B, C, I put P right there, and I put H right here. Well, the problem states that BP over CP is 3. So that means that since BC is S, that CP is S over 4, and BP is 3S over 4. So that means that since B, BH is half of BC by definition, since it's the, the, the contact point of the altitude, we know that BH is going to be S over 2, and HP is going to be S over 4. And that gives us a lot of lengths to work with, right? Because we know HP. We can draw HP as S over 4. And what we have now is we, we've kind of determined the angles within triangle AHP. We know that it's a, it's a right triangle with legs S root 3 over 2 and S over 4. So now we, can, we have ratios between sides, which is really nice. And so we can also label the, the points in triangle OXP. OX has length 17. And yeah, pretty much. That's the only thing we know right now. But as you'll see later, this actually reveals to us a lot. Because if we erase everything else, uh, so we have more space. I don't know if there's a better eraser, but it's okay. So I got a little more space now. So the nice thing about AHP is now, now, that, now, we, now that we know this angle, that angle APH, we know angle XPO. Since we know angle XPO, we can use some, a little bit of trigonometry to figure out some of the other lengths in the triangle, uh, other lengths in triangle OXP. So let's look at that real quick. So... Let's use a little bit of trigonometry. It's no nothing really fancy at all. It's just a it's just a way for me to keep track of ratios. So before we jump into that, what length is most valuable to us? Well, we know that we labeled here that AO is 20, right? So and we know we can find AP by the Pythagorean theorem because we have the two legs of the right triangle. So what's most valuable for us is PO right now. Because if we find AP, we can add that to PO to get AO. So we can write. So we our goal is to find PO, basically. And how we can do this by using a little bit of trigonometry. Because we know that sine of theta equals 17 over OP. So OP is 17 over sine theta. And now we just have to find sine theta, right? So we can use a little bit of Pythagorean theorem. So we know that sine theta, we're gonna be we're gonna be doing that on triangle APH. So basically we have sine theta is AH over AP. And so we know that the S's are gonna cancel out, so I'm not gonna include that, but AH is going to be we're gonna have square root of three over two on the top because the s is canceled and on the bottom we're gonna have well it's gonna be square root of three over two squared plus one over four squared so that's what's gonna be and if i move it up here a little bit we can simplify this to well basically on the top we have Square root of 3 over 2, of course. And on the bottom, well, square root of 3 over 2 squared is 3 over 4. And then 1 fourth square is 1 over 16. So 3 over 4 plus 1 over 16, that's going to be...
basically 3 over 4 is 12 over 16. So we're going to have square root of 13 over 4 on the bottom. And that's going to be equal to sine theta. So sine theta is equal to that. So I'm going to erase this because we have an expression. And if we rationalize the denominator, what do we get? Well, we can basically bring the we can bring the 4 to the top. So we have to simplify square root 3 over 2 over square root 13 over 4. And this can be done pretty quickly because we can... It's essentially equivalent to... Uh, I think I... So that's what it's equivalent to. And this is equal to 2 root 3 over square root of 13 which is 2 root 39 over 13. So that's what sine theta is equivalent to. And now we can simplify that. So, so we have 2 root, 13, 2 root 39 over 13 as our sine theta. And now we can stick that in to find OP. So basically, we have that OP is 17 over that expression. So um, it's not going to be too pretty, but we have to do it. So OP is 17 over 2 root 39 over 13, which is seems like 200 and... 21 over 2 root 39 and the nice thing about this is that we multiply top and bottom by root 39 so we're gonna have a 17 times 13 on the top and then times a root 39 over 2 times 39 so you can cross out that and we get 17 root 39 over 6 that's that length op and if we add that to so we have OP is 17 root 39 over 6. So adding that to, well, the hypotenuse of that right triangle, AHP, is going to be, it's going to be what we got earlier, S root 13 over 4. So that means our final equation is 20 AO equals S root 13 over 4 plus 17 root 39 over 6. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by square root of 13. You'll see why I'm doing that later. But basically, if I divide both sides by root 13, I get 20 over root 13 equals s over 4 plus 17 root 3 over 6 and then i'm going to move well i'm going to move the 17 root uh, 3 over 6 to the other side and i get 20 over root 13 minus 17 root 3 over 6 equals s over 4 now we're ready to conclude. We just have to do a final simplification of the problem to find S, and then we can conclude. So I've erased. And so I'm going to multiply um, both sides by 4, of course, and we get 80 over root 13. And then so what we're going to get is we're going to get minus 34 root 3 over 3, right? Because we're going to multiply that fraction by 2 thirds. And the nice thing about that is we can rewrite 34 root 3 over 3 as 34 over root 3, right? 34 over root 3. And so that we've, we've, we've expressed it in the form m over root n minus p over root q. So the final answer is 80 plus 13 plus 3 plus 34, which turns out to be 130. And we are done.